Hey Adam, how about Creep Show 3 for this week's creature feature? Yeah, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I don't feel like that one. Well, how about the remake of Fright Night 2? Nah, that's 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 garbage. Why would you why would you recommend that? Come on. Oh, you don't want to do a crappy vampire movie? How about this one then? Howling 3: The Marsupials. Nah, I don't. I, I just, you know, I just, I don't, I'm not feeling that one tonight either. I just, I just don't, I don't, don't know what it is, you know. Well, come on then. What, what is it you want to do? I just don't know. What, what could we do? Oh, oh, hey, yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, this is a good one. It's a classic right here. I think this would be. I think this is the one. Hello friends and fiends, welcome to another edition of Blood and Guts Creature Features, where we talk about some of the greatest creature features ever recorded on film. And with me as always is this guy right here, Matt. How's it going, Matt? I'm doing fantastic, Adam. How about yourself? I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on. <laughs> Aren't we all, brother? That's right. And you know what we're talking about tonight? The only, classic. Yeah, only one of the greatest movies ever. Mm -hmm. As presented on your shirt, yep. The Monster Squad. Yeah. Fantastic film. It's like, brings back so much nostalgia as when I was a youth. It was one of the first, uh, I say this a lot, but it was one of the first horror movies I ever watched because you know, right. obviously it was kind of kid friendly, but still scary, but enough to get yeah. you sink your teeth into the horror genre. I remember the first time I ever saw it, I went to a friend's house and this was an older friend, probably two, three years older. Mm -hmm. I had never seen it and he had it on VHS tape and he's like, you have to see this film. So he puts this in. And from the very opening, with the raid on the on the castle and all the, I, I was hooked. I was hooked. That's kind of like me. I actually would uh, stay with my cousins, and my aunt would be like, "Okay, y'all gonna lay down here and try taking that, but we're gonna put on yeah. Monster Squad for you." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> yeah. love that movie." Yeah, no naps will be taken today. No, exactly. <laughs> but we will be so, quiet and watch the movie. Right. But now, one great thing you mentioned that opening scene. I know uh, when Shane Black and uh, Fred Decker wrote the script, they actually intended they wanted it to be a whole bigger scene. Oh, they right, They wanted right. zeppelins, like all kinds of things like going on. 300, 300 men in an army right. and then some but the producers horses like, and things coming in. The producer's like, hey, we don't have that kind of money, guys. We're going to have to scale it back just a bit. going to cost the budget of the whole film yeah. right there. So, but yeah. But, absolutely. I mean, even then, like... It just shows the ingenuity and the great writing team that Fred Decker and Shane Black was because they were able to scale it back and still give us an impactful opening when you got Van Helsing coming in there raiding the castle. Yeah. You got the, the Virgin, you know, reading uh, reading the... Yeah, like the incantation. Yeah, the incantation. Stuff. Thank right, you. Yeah. Blanked on that for a second. But yeah, it happens. They read the incantation to open up the portal. Yeah. Uh, the suck in Dracula and Van Helsing and all them as well. So that opened up Limbo and took them all in. And at the time when I was young, you know, when I watched it, that, I mean, looking back now, it's, the CGI doesn't hold up. Yeah. It doesn't hold up very well, but back then it was awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, even, even then, like you said, it still has like its own charm to it. Kind of yeah. reminds me of, like Raiders of the Lost Ark and Ann Jones and the Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, like those movies which they wanted to try to do as much as they can in camera as possible. So like yeah, this yeah. one, you just had the obviously the green screen with Limbo when it comes up, but all the practical effects that were done by the great Stan Winston to me were yeah. still amazing. And the possums. Yeah, and then obviously <laughs> they were possums, yeah. <laughs> and people are like, "Those aren't native to Transylvania." Oh, dude. Yeah, but they but they, they look great on but camera. They're, when they're, she's they're eating. an homage to the original film in mm -hmm. which they used possums as rats. So, you know, we're we'll, we'll let it slide. But I mean, that's one thing like you bring up. I love about that movie as well because you see Dracula. You see Dracula has has the women turned as well, and they're all in the gothic white robes and everything. Yep. Like everything just takes you back to the Universal movies and the old Hammer horror pictures as well. Right, and that's what I love about this film is 
is I know that they 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 had to be careful with the yes. the, the copyright for the Universal Monsters, mm-hmm. and I know that they had to be careful. But the the thing that I love about it is I feel like it wouldn't be the same film if they would have been able to use those same Universal Monsters. You know, I mean, the little differences they made in the characters and mm-hmm. the makeups and stuff like that almost makes it, you know, stand alone. Yeah. You know, better. Absolutely. Because, the, you know. And I, I think about, like, obviously when we cut to present day, like uh, they said Shane Black's, or not Shane Black, but Fred Decker's original idea was he wanted to introduce, like, the little rascals meet uh, right meet the monsters right right and uh that eventually evolved i don't know if maybe they watched goonies or like well we might tinker with that a little bit because a lot of people will compare this movie with the goonies but with monsters and for good reason i mean you got a great cast of uh, kids that do a great job in their roles uh just thinking about whenever you first get introduced to, uh, to sean the leader of the monster squad and patrick yeah. in that principal's office and he's like going through all the papers like you know I, I see here you're you're drawing in class and not paying attention you know what i think is cool science science, science is, is cool, cool. <laughs> and 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 it's that 80s nostalgia so if you're a fan of stranger things or if you're a fan of 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 stand by me mm-hmm. or the goonies specific, you know this has monsters added in so there's a bonus it, for you. Even today, even though uh, this movie was made over 30 years ago, it still resonates with kids today. Because when you think about kids that are that age, you know, adults, parents, they don't they don't know nothing. They don't know about what they're going through. So they're going to be rebellious. It's during those rebellious years. So it's a movie that you can identify with right. at any age as a child. Uh, but just continuing then with those characters, you, you also had the one place fat kid, that, um, Brent Sh- uh, Shellam. You know, he passed away sadly, but he done a great job yeah. in that role. You got Rudy. I mean, just so many that so many good characters, and yeah. and you have that that whole Fred Decker kind of like audio, like yeah, that back and forth that that resonates when, especially I love the scene when they're sitting on the roof, yeah, and they're watching the the, uh, the drive in, you know, across the way, uh-huh. and and it's just that little back and forth, you know, that that kind of like brings you into that family element, yeah, and and. All of the characters, you know, you, you can tell that some of the characters were a little bit rushed mm-hmm. in their in their thought process, but but they still brought it it's out. It's mostly you know? yeah, mostly the adults are the ones that are kind of rushed in there. Right. They, they don't have as much meat in the roles. But just piggybacking on what you said, it reminds me, like we're talking about how you can resonate with things. Or I had those same conversations when my parents were like, "Hey, I want to watch Friday Thirteenth Part 7 They're like, "Didn't right. they kill Jason in the last movie?" <laughs> well, yeah, they killed him, but yeah, but he's, he's gonna come back from the grave. Come back. <laughs> Yeah. And so, like, this one was, like, Groundhog Day 12 or something like that. Yeah. It's like, oh, they cut him up into pieces and melt him. He's still going to come back. Right, right. And this is, I mean, and the, going back to that makeup that was done by the, the wonderful oh, artist yes. at the Stan Winston mm-hmm. studio. So you know you're getting some some really dynamic makeups. And and I was I was watching the scene earlier, too, where where Dracula hooks up the, the little... Uh, I don't know whatever like the electrodes, electrodes yeah, yeah type of thing to Frankenstein, to Frankenstein. and there's that scene it's that very iconic scene where they just hold they yeah. all hold their poses so the wolf man he starts howling and the creature's doing his thing and the mummy's doing his thing and and, and Dracula is reaching down towards the Frankenstein monster and they just pause yeah so it's almost like an old soap opera kind of like a hold there and, like i said it's just and, a great shot and like you think about all like the the gill man which they don't even call him the gill man or the creature they, they he is called the he's gill the gill man, man got, yeah, yeah the i got it backwards because yeah. they couldn't use like couldn't say creature based on what we talked about earlier right right but like i said that shot and you have all the and they characters had to, there had to make them all just a little bit different so that's why the frankenstein has the 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 i guess the bolts the things are the rivets are on the yeah. head and the you know the costumes are a little bit different you know right. and the wolfman just enough and, to get away with and in that scene I was watching it closely earlier too you know the wolf man as he's walking down to the river before the the creature throws the, the casket of Frankenstein mm-hmm. out you know the wolf man he's not he's not hunched over he's not like this he's kind of walking a little bit upright mm-hmm. a little bit down low and I kind of like these little additions going back like, you know. like we're talking about the characters too with the wolf man you got John Grease you know Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite yeah, who's Doing, played a werewolf in several films yeah, now. played him in Fright Night too, and then does a great job in this one but just going back to the scene where you're introduced to his character and he's just begging to be locked up yeah and, uh, please just, like, just lock me up and ends up getting him shot up. but then you see that iconic trip when he's in the paramedics like the ambulance and you see the, the shot of the full all moon all the transformation and you just hear the bones crunching and he just comes up and kills the paramedic like I so said that was just an awesome shot and just the way they introduced him and brought him about then you get the mummy 
when they're in there investigating the mummy being gone and the dad just uses that classic line yeah. from Night of the Creeps like you know, dead people just don't get up and walk away by themselves yeah exactly just little, and there's those little, little references you know yeah. and also in in uh what was it Night of the Creeps you know yeah. when the bathroom stall scene yeah. on the wall the graffiti Monster Squad what was it, Is it Monster Squad Rules or something Monster like Squad that. something along those lines but yeah that's in there and 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 you know, speaking of Uncle Rico, he can throw a, a stake yeah. over those mountains. Uh, Clear over sure. the mountain. <laughs> but yeah, just digress and then just to continue on. But like talking about the great Stan Winston and talking about the Wolfman too, like how he uh, modeled the face after his own. So you got little yes, of yes, Stan and you can kind of see that if you if you know what Stan Winston looks like, it's definitely. But, and that phone booth scene. Oh yeah, it's just the glass breaking into it's, the way they do the shot when they cut, like you know, because he's he's all human, then just cuts around the corner, and then you got that quick cut, yep. and he's all of a sudden starts changing, and you see him spitting up the pills and everything. Oh yeah, fantastic. And and as far as like a, a a family picture goes, you know, I mean, you could you could show this to, you know, it's kind of one of those ones that you could watch with a a, a horror mm-hmm. horror fan, or you could watch with your family. Yeah. Either way, you're covered. Well, like I said, it's covered. Like, like we talked about, right, it's a great way if you if you have a child and you really want to introduce them to something that's not going to completely scare them, but it'll be entertaining as well and just kind of get a feel for horror movies. It, this is a great movie. Like, yeah. uh, kind of going back to the plot then, one thing I love too with the kids is when they have their initiations like in the treehouse and they're just talking about, doing stuff like we do <laughs> I as love kids, that tree house talking too. about horror movies like the rules and horror movies like what can kill a werewolf and like silver bullets. Like, what else, Rudy? Yeah. So, uh, that's it. You shoot him with a silver bullet. And, and and I was jealous of this treehouse as a child. Oh, gosh, me too. And I had I one, was, but like I said, no, it wasn't, yeah, it no, wasn't no, like that. No, that's a glorious treehouse. It kind of makes you shed a tear when Dracula throws that dynamite in there and blows it up. Yeah. And, and you know, Dracula throwing dynamite in itself is, is yeah a little silly. But but, speaking you know. of Dracula, Duncan Ryger done just a fantastic job in that role and just completely oh, nailed yeah. it. Yeah, and yeah. he has no problem in this film with the murder of children. Right. You know, like he 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 doesn't care. Adults, children, if you get in his way, he is going to take you down. Yeah, which is just a great great villain. Well, whenever he had that one scene with Phoebe, I, I know I've seen in the documentaries where they they the director Fred Decker talked to Phoebe. He's like, now uh, he's going to pick you up. They had her on a lift. Yeah. He's like, he's going to pick yeah. you up, and then at the at, at your cue, you're going to scream your brains out. And she's like, what's my cue? Yeah, how will and I know? How will I know? I, he goes, Trust me, you'll know. You'll know. And so whenever he opens his eyes and yep. she sees the red eyes and the fangs, she just freaks out and does a great job. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, like I said, Dracula, he's, just, he's perfectly cast in the role. Uh, another yeah. one that's an unsung hero in this movie is Scary German Guy. Scary German Guy. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. So, like, you know, they go to him uh, to figure out what's going on in that German with book because they can't speak a lick of German. That cut with the knife. And yeah. then, would you want some more cake? Yeah. You know? It's time for the last piece of pie. <laughs> yeah. And, of yeah. course, of course, Horace is like, yeah, I'll take some right here. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, he, he does a great job in the movie as well. And just have that little, like, they don't really talk about it, but you see whenever he uh, talks about how he knows monsters and he picks his hand on the door, you can see the symbols there where he was actually in a, a concentration camp where right. he was Jewish. So that that they're like... Little touches yeah, like ki- that. Yeah, kids probably won't get it, but like the ones that actually looked at the history a little bit, that's just a little quick nod to let you know that, yeah, he has seen some scary things in his day. And so like that's why monsters don't really freak him out because he's really lived through some horrible things. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, such a classic. Such a classic. And it's still it's still great to put on if you got the the edition with the special features. I've never seen it in the Blu-ray. Uh, I had format or any of those uh, I don't know if Screen Factory or what is, is Screen Factory did another one or, I don't know if they did or didn't to be honest with you on that but, one that's why I, that skipped me on my research but um, but it it, it it holds up either way yeah. it's great and the great thing about this movie was I mean it was made for a budget of 14 million which back in 30 years ago that's pretty high for a horror movie yeah. and uh, they just didn't know how to market they are like do we have a horror movie do we have a family movie like how do we market this and so when the movie came out in August of 87 it only made three point eight million, so it was a pretty big box office bomb, and uh, that kind of put Fred Decker into movie jail for a little while until he made <laughs> RoboCop three, and then yep. that didn't go so well either. But um, they really did not know how popular this movie was until it got released on DVD back in like a uh, two thousand five or two thousand six, somewhere in there. But whenever it released on DVD, man, it just blew the sales to the roof. Yeah, and uh, so then they started. Uh, actually going to the Alamo, Al- Alamo houses and started rescreening it for fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it sells out all the time because obviously this has a huge cult following. Yeah, and then they'll have special screenings with the cast and Q&As yes. going on and all that stuff, which would be awesome to attend. 
I would love to, to do one of those oh, myself. Oh, gosh, me too. And I mean, but, if you get a chance, there's a documentary out too, and it's actually called Wolfman's Got Nards. Yep. It's got a great, great um, interviews with the cast, just little tidbits behind the scenes. So if you're if you're a huge fan of Monster Squad, that's a mu- must watch for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And just such a classic. I mean, it's a good Friday night film. It's a good, mm-hmm. you know, Sunday morning film. If you're just wanting something cool to put on in the background and have a good time, you yep. know, this will fill your your yeah, void for absolutely that, so. it's, it's something i watch every year to gear up for halloween and my boys love it my wife loves it honestly i, I haven't yeah. met many people that do not like this movie and honestly the ones that do i mean if you don't you know everybody's got different tastes but man i'm like right. what's wrong with you yeah what's wrong with you yeah. but this this is just i mean you know then the, like the makeups i i I'm a big sucker for the makeup. So, yes, me too. So the, that Gilman makeup and how they had to make just some subtle little mm-hmm. changes, but still they look so damn good. Oh, they do. And it's like and we talked about a few episodes the Frank back makeup, the with the original makeup. creature. When he's zipped up in there, he's in there. So if he has to go to the bathroom, it's it's, it's a job to get it off. So yeah. it's really a labor of love to, to play that part because yeah, you look great oh, yeah. on camera, but you're having to suffer a little bit d- throughout the filming of it. And the actor that portrayed the, the Gill man in this was actually not, uh, not a, a no, typical not an actor, actor yeah. per se. He just you know, wanted to do it. He was an actual, he was actually was part of the design crew that came up with mm-hmm. the makeup itself. And, and he just said, you know, he, he actually went to Stan Winston and said, Hey, I've been practicing this kind of stuff. Is there a way that I could show you, you know, my designs, is there a way that I could be in the film? So Stan Winston actually championed him to to portray the Gill Man mm-hmm. after he saw the suit. Because he said, you know, it's kind of already like we've already made a suit based upon, or not a suit, but a latex, like, kind of mold based right. upon my figure. Can we not just build upon that and, and go ahead and, and, and let me portray him? And he was like, well, you know, sure, let's see what you got. So he actually got that you know that actually because shows of that. how perfectly cast all the monsters were in this movie because uh, one thing oh, yeah. we, we failed to mention so far is the great tom noonan, tom noonan yeah. who, who played frankenstein's monster and in doing research for this i actually i didn't know this until um or, until i started doing the research was he turned down a part from Catherine bigelow to be in near dark to yes do, to yes. do this movie yes he did they were trying to get him on both and they were yeah. like no it's not going to work and yeah. now, yeah, because they said she went to the set a few times, just like you said, trying to talk to me. He's like, no, trying no, to champion that, he, yeah. he just had done, I believe it was Manhunter, uh, the, uh, the other oh, Hannibal yeah, and they movie. wanted him as a villain, yeah. And so he, now he's cast he's, as a villain, yeah. He's like, well, because I want to do this one because it's a little bit more lighthearted and uh, yep. done a fantastic job. He just knocks it out of the park. And one great thing about him, too, is he stayed in character throughout the entire shoot, so because he didn't want to ruin that illusion with the kids. And I remember the one that played is either one that played Rudy or or um. Sean said they actually tried to talk to him like in between takes like hey you know I, I know it's you Tom and yeah, yeah and he's still just saying what <laughs> yeah so good he's going to remain in character and you also had that little homage to you know the Frankenstein film yes. with the flowers by the water where you know what's he going to do to Phoebe in, instead yeah what's he going to do to Phoebe but you know of course this is the way that 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 Karloff wanted it yeah you know Karloff wanted a you know not do the scene where he throws the child into the water so they kind of paid a little bit of an homage to that to where (laughs) to where you know instead we're going to exchange flowers and become friends you know and that's great and and once you when you see her holding his hand and he steps up and he's just friend (laughs) and and that as a child to me when i was when i was a little watching it, it was like please let the frankenstein monster be on their side yeah please let him be the guy that like crosses over and he's like I'm not going to let you hurt these kids, you know, mm. to the Dracula character. That was what, just... What I love awesome. about that scene, though, when she introduces him to everybody, is how they all run for cover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's it's like, don't a, be chicken. He's a friend. Yeah. He's your friend. Come on, guys. Friend? He wants to hang out with us. And it's... it's That's great. And they have him in the treehouse. Yeah. And they have him listening to the music on the headphones. Takes, takes a picture of his taking a, a sister. A, a naked picture of the sister. <laughs> yeah. You know? And his eyes go, oh, oh. Like... <laughs> You know, it's such a great character, uh, you know, development there with, with Tom Noonan. So. Oh, absolutely. Right. So, I mean, well, last thing the office is cover too is it has a great soundtrack. The the end in the at the end don't like give you like a little tearjerker. Like obviously spoilers. I, I'm sure you've seen this movie by now, but like if you haven't, try to watch when, it. When when Frankenstein so. gets sucked up in in limbo, oh, yeah. and Phoebe throws him that teddy bear, and he's just like bye, going off into. Oh, the and scene. he's holding the teddy bear like this. 
as yeah. he's going up into the either. And it's just, oh, man, yeah. It's a fantastic Niagara film. Falls, Frankie. Angel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Niagara Falls. Exactly. So uh, that's that's really it as a wrap, guys. Like a uh, Monster Squad, obviously, as you can tell, it's very near and dear to our hearts. Uh, very fantastic film. If you haven't watched it, uh, do yourself a favor. Go ahead and pick it up. I, I'm not sure if it's streaming anywhere, but uh, physical media always trumps whatever streaming because you always have that for yourself. But exactly. definitely give it a watch. You know, pop you some popcorn. Hopefully it's uh, raining outside with a nice little thunderstorm going to give you a little mood. Yeah, just a nice Sunday. You're just chilling. You just want a good creature feature to pop on in the background and have a have a good time with it. You know, you got the classic 80s nostalgia in there with the wardrobe and the soundtrack and the outfits and the vehicles. So Yep. Yeah. And uh, let, let us know in the comments what did you love about this movie. Uh, there's, uh, if, if you didn't like this movie, let us know why. Like I said, we'd love to have that little discourse in there as well. One good thing is I know uh, they were going to do a remake at one time, but thank thank the Lord that that's like dead in the water now. But yeah, yeah, I'm glad they didn't. Don't 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 try to mess with this. Yeah, this, this one's perfect in itself. Leave so. it alone. But but yeah, as always, boys and ghouls, friends and fiends, remember <laughs> blood and guts. HHN. Stay tuned for more creature features and content coming your way. Ha <laughs>